Hey, what's up all you burners out there? This is Weedman420 with the Weedman420 Podcast. Last week we talked about sativa and indica strains. This week we're going to talk about terpenes and the flavor profiles of cannabis and where they come from, what they can do for your body, each flavor profile. And uh, so what? let me go into this right away. Terpenes are pronounced terpenes or terpenoids are the aromatic flavors found in uh, in the plants, basically the oils. From a cannabis perspective, terpenes are secreted alongside cannabinoids, which we all like. We talked about last time a little bit of THC and CBD, and they're responsible for many of the distinguishing characteristics of the different strains that you guys all smoke out there. Uh, and Dobbs is going to talk a little bit about the terpenes found in cannabis. There's three big flavor profiles of them, but some stuff to consider with terpenes. Who in here likes beer? I mean, who doesn't? Me. Anybody? <laughs> yeah, that's Anybody like wine? I'm a fan. You're a fan of wine? Put your just, hand up for that one, Paul. Yeah, we know you're a wine, wine boy. boy. Yeah, <laughs> wine boy. You know sometimes. Little cheese with that one. <laughs> think, of, think of this when you think of terpenes. Think of like how you drink a beer and your flavor profile in a beer. Think about wine when you taste a flavor profile in wine or when you taste a flavor profile in a soup uh-huh. or in food. Yeah. You know, you'll find the different flavors in each one of those and... Like in your meals, in vegetables, even in cleaning products, you can smell terpenes. Terpenes is are, are used in smell everywhere, and they're present in the cannabis flower, mm-hmm. big time. And so we're gonna dive into terps, as I like to call them. I put a lot of uh, uh, hashtags out there about terpenes on Instagram and stuff like that because I see what we call trichomes, which is the little white head you see on cannabis. Yeah, they're going through puberty. You got the little acne going there. <laughs> Been there. And um, what's cool about that, there's 20,000 terpenes in existence today. At least 100 are produced by cannabis. Did you count them all? One by one off the, the little trichomes on each on each flower. We've probably like, them tried all. them all. Yeah, probably. <laughs> that is true. And the one thing about, about terpenes, and as the other word they use is called terpenoids, has evolved over the plant in hundreds and hundreds of years. And what basically what the plant produced of this terpenoids or terpenes is for, one was to attract bugs for pollination. The other one was to keep bugs away. So that's like just some basic information. So like of, offspring? Like yeah, basically. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> summer's right around the corner. Yes. That's just pretty cool though, thinking about like how plants protect themselves from, from predators and stuff. It's really cool to see. Yeah. And to see that while they affect the plant in like similar ways to what they do to our body is interesting. And it comes from the female mm, plant. And they have what they call, you're going to like this one, Dav, glandular. 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 Ooh, find me a nice favorite with some glandular. Trichomes, which we talked about just a minute ago, which are the glands that look like the small hairs or growths that protrude from the flowers and the leaves. Mm. So we never see like a, a, a bud that's really frosty. Yeah. I like the frosty nugs. Yeah, those those nice like white, beautiful, shiny, glimmering, I would even say. Just those beautiful nugs. Got beautiful nugs. So that's, nugs. that's what you're seeing from what we talked about just a minute ago with the protection that plant did. But nowadays, growers are, are producing more trichomes on their plants for more flavor profiling as we all like flavors to humans to us terpenes act as a natural guide to discovering the plants and strains what we talked about in the last episode a little bit of thc and cbd there's also flavonoids and all different flavor profiles that that dob's going to talk about here in a minute of the terpenes and the trichomes and what we like to taste in in our cannabis And this is why we're talking about this today. So when you're going to dispensaries and you're buying your cannabis, most or some dispensaries are putting that on their label now, which is kind of dope. I don't know if you guys have seen that uh, when you're buying. Revolution does it, which is awesome. They have some of the best labeling because I think they're the only brand that we've smoked that has uh, the terpene profile at all anywhere on the label. And that's really cool. So they're kind of trying to change the way that people go about purchasing their weed 
And that's nice. important so more people can learn. Hopefully once they see that I'm there, if you don't already know what they are, people go, well, what the hell is this? And they look it up and learn some of the stuff we're trying to teach you today. And they it's got also, that Blackberry Kush. Yeah, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's one of our favorites. But it's actually, you know, we talked about Indica and Siva on the last episode and how they make us feel. You know, Indica's in the couch, Sativa's an uplifting one. Mm-hmm. Well, how do you generally want to feel when you're buying cannabis? That's the thing. When you right. buy, we talked about last time, when you're buying from your guy in the street. Oh, yeah. He doesn't know. And you don't know. Well, for the most part. Does he, he know? He gets, he gets strange names. And then right, but do, you can he's look a smart him up. He, he's a smart guy. He's right. leafly. But my thing is, is when you're going to a dispensary and you're asking the dispensary. Oh, yeah, as in the connoisseur. The bud tender, hey, do you know what kind of terpenes are in this? I bet mm-hmm. you most of them don't know. Yeah, I, I would not never ask. I never even thought to ask, honestly, as a buyer. Yeah. 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 To, to so put it from that perspective. It's a hard you can, questions we'd make. No, well, that, I mean, it's just, right it's just things. a great thing to talk about when you're going to buy and you go and you're like, most of us go in, I do it. I go mm. into my dispensary. I'm like, oh, is it Indica or Sativa? You know, right. I don't really generally look for the terpene profile, which I've started over the last couple of weeks after doing some learning about terpenes. I, I went in to my dispensary last week and I said, do you know the terpene profile in this? And they didn't know, Ooh. which was kind of weird. You know, I was very upset because I was like, I, well, I want to know if it's got a lemony flavor to it. I want to mm-hmm. know, does it have a blackberry flavor to it or I a blueberry you, yeah, flavor to it? Yeah, you can't really it. base that all off name too. Because right. like, when you smoke like something like Super Lemon Haze, obviously you're expecting this is going to be lemony. But if you're just like going and grabbing some like maybe Face Mel OG, just, I don't know. Right. You don't know what's in it. Like, what you is, don't know what the taste going to The be thing like. is, what is your flavor profile? What kind of flavors do you like? When we talk about beer and wine, why do you like a certain mm-hmm. beer? Or why do you like a certain wine? Because of the flavor profile. Like a, the Chardonnay. The Chardonnay. For some of you that want to be able to do that for now without any of the labeling or people not knowing it, uh, if you can start to adapt to those smells that certain terpenes carry with them, you can kind of have a sense to guess that like a certain terpene could be in a another weed that you buy but that's about your only way to guess if it's not somehow on the label it kind of basically coming down to is how do you want to feel after you smoke how do you want to feel do you you want want to feel up do you want to feel down what do you prefer and there's guiding posts with terpenes now. There's the 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 wheel, the, the terpene wheel you can go and look at. Right. There's also another website that has each terpene flavor, which Dov's going to go over to. I don't want to steal his thunder. And he's going to explain some of the most famous terpenes and what their flavor profiles are a little bit for you. So we can go into and you can talk, you can research yourself and what you like. But some of the research that terpenes are doing, and, and since legalization has happened, and we talked about this last episode, Many people can decide now what kind of cannabis strain they like based on terpenes, based on if it's an indica or sativa, based on the terpenes. And eventually we're going to talk about cannabinoids, which will be a later episode. But I'm going to turn over to Dob here, and he's going to go into some flavors, the profiles, and tell you a little about some of the most famous ones. And then we'll go into some what he's got to talk about. Dob, boy, what you got for us? So we got the terps. The terpity terp terps. Not just the ones from the University of Maryland. Are they purple wow. terp terps? Perp terps? <laughs> they can be. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds pretty cool. Perp terps. <laughs> what up, my perp terp? Perp terp. Hell yeah. Purple turple? Oh, no. Ooh, you don't want one of those. Maybe Polly can help you with that, but... Get out of here. Wrong department. Anyways, <laughs> terpenes. Uh, looking like those fragrant oils that give cannabis its aromic diversity. Uh, sometimes they offer that flowery scent. Sometimes they offer more of like a pine. You can get... Plenty of different fruit aromas from it, too, which is crazy. Uh, it's kind of like the sensation you get when you, like, go smell that, like, fresh flower or that fresh, like, cut of grass, you know? I, I like to think about uh, the terpene, uh, like, aroma. It's like a nice spring day. You know, like, you just go out there and you get all that freshness. Everything's just good. I love a good, fresh-smelling spring yeah. day when the pollen's all out in the air and you can just mm-hmm. go out there and smell Especially when you're st- when you're baked... Oh man, and, and all like your senses are heightened, and you just go. <sighs> you just feel relaxed, like mm-hmm. you know. It's like that's when I feels like the start of a new year, and like when you buy your weed, you know, like one of the first thing is what weed man always says to me is, "Dav, smell these nugs." It's like and he puts it right in my face, and I'm like, "Wow, these are good nugs." But that, <laughs> they're always good nugs, no matter the smell. <laughs> oh yeah, because it's the high that gets you there. But the the terpene aromas is just like so, 
it's like one of the first things you notice off the weed, like that dank, musky thing that my mom always yells about me for smoking in the house. <laughs> 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 like, that, that would be a terpene uh, aroma. And some of the more well-known ones, uh, we'll start with micrine. Uh, that's the most abundant one. Makes up 65% of a terpene profile in some cannabis. It has that earthy little musk to it. Really, that terpene is used for reducing inflammation and chronic pain. See, hold on a second. See, that's the cool thing about it, which I don't think people know about terpenes, that it has potential medical value to them. Mm -hmm. People think it's just the sativa indica that's had the medical value to it. But with all this research that they're finding now that the terpenes are the medical value. Mm-hmm. And more so with cannabinoids too, which we'll talk about the next episode. But oh yeah, these these things are like the miracle yep. fucking thing. Miracle they got cure. So many, and like you're not even just like helping with pain or helping with your body. Like there's thing I'll get into it. There's so much more. Uh, but I wanted to hit you guys with this fact or fiction real quick. I know it's a long time uh, stoner like myth buster. I guess you can say when you eat a mango before you smoke, does it give a stronger effect? with the terpenes in the mango affecting the terpenes in the THC. Something I've never tried. I feel like there's curious. stronger terpenes in different fruits, though. Like, I feel like mm-hmm. a mango doesn't even have the strongest. So, like, why is it a mango? I don't know. It's what just about, like, an one orange? of those things. Well, that might be in that micrine, which has the stronger, uh, where that micrine is found oh, in. Fruity yeah, yeah, you mm-hmm. know, with mango, lemongrass, hops especially. Right. There's a lot of micrine and hops especially that I, I know a lot about hops. You know, Hop uh, thyme. <laughs> so they do have, those are found in those four. And I, I see that a lot. The micrine is the most mm-hmm. high yeah. prominent in a lot of a lot of the strains that we smoke. That's on every nice. Revolution strain that we've bought that? has yeah. had micrine oh, really? on the label. Nice. I'm pretty sure so far. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's something uh, you burners out there should try. Do the do the mango challenge. Let me know what it's what it's like. Uh, I don't really know where to get a mango at the moment. So Polly ate, ate, yeah, ate one this morning. Did you? Yeah, eat one? Fucking, I, Why yeah, didn't you I screwed smoke? the pooch. I'm not a waker and baker like right you. I gotta bush. wait. Uh-huh. I gotta wait until, like, at least noon before I start smoking, unless we're going out to do something. It's like a uh, hide from that '70s show, keep himself pure till two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, going on, we got uh, the next well-known terp. We got limonin, uh, more that citrusy like lemon. If you wouldn't have guessed that smell by the name, you're probably an idiot or very stoned. Found in cleaning products. Which is something I was hinting at earlier. Uh, it's got an antibacterial element to it. Uh, I think it's like found in like the lemon pledge. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, no, Mr. Superman. No. <laughs> uh, but what's nice about it is it does help with mood and stress and uh, getting you in that right mindset. See another one. Yeah, that's great. So you know, potential medical, medical values there, mm-hmm. and uh, those are found in like sativas, like Jack Carrere, Durban Poison, Lemon Haze. Uh, I found that those are really all sativas. Yep. I thought that was like the most interesting fact. I never really looked at that. Like, are some just designated to certain indicas and some sativas? Uh, linalool is the next one. I know that sounds. Really crazy. Uh, recognizes the classic marijuana smell, like I said my mother yells at me for. Uh, that spicy floral, it gives you that sedative and relaxing uh, feel to it. Uh, strains that have that is more like amnesia haze. And a uh, good thing about that is it helps with the arthritis, depression, and uh, seizures. Nice. Yeah, also yeah, found in nice. lavender. Lavender, yeah. You take those little lavender baths. I know you. Little mm, bath bomb I boy. love the lavender bath. Mm. Uh, Caryophylline is the next one. That one I cannot pronounce for the life of me, but I'm going with it. Uh, spicy pepper aroma to it. Uh, found in oregano, like what tea buys off the streets. <laughs> uh, helps with treating True. alcohol withdrawal symptoms. That's and huge. that's found in... Super Silver Haze and Skywalker OG, which is oh, that's a good string. Very good one. That we, we like, like Skywalker OG. Big Star Wars heads here, absolutely. And the last one I'm going to hint at is the Terpinol, and it's got a floral-like aroma similar to lilacs. I know Paul likes to go pick uh, Shorty a bunch of lilacs. 
<laughs> yeah, I know the smell well. And uh, give it to her, and then they go out for a malt and go cruising. Nutmeg Jalopy. and cumin. Nutmeg and cumin are big in that one, too. Oh, yeah, you, you know a thing or two about nutmeg. Oh, I do. Nice. Uh, it's got like a minty taste to it, found in uh, perfumes. And uh, it's famous for everyone's favorite effect, the couch lock effect. Which I love. We couch all love that one. I love it. And uh, that's found in uh, strains like Girl Scout Cookies, Jack, Herrera. Which we like those strains a lot. The OG Kush, which I think is found in almost every hybrid. <laughs> Just about. It's like the miracle strain right there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's what I did my research on for the terpenes and the flavor aromas. I thought it was awesome to like see the effects that it had on uh, just everything, like from your body to the cleaning products, which we know Weed Man's probably going to go take advantage of soon because he's got to go clean up the kitchen. I also got to go clean the bong too, so. Ooh, yeah. That's... One one thing to hit on with these flavors, um, if you're into cooking, and like making edibles and stuff or anything like that you got to kind of remember and learn these flavor profiles because they can come out in the things you cook and they can kind of leave that flavor in whatever you put it in uh so if you're into that kind of stuff learn a little bit more about these and try to implement it into some of your cooking and see if you could make your recipe a little bit better if you just use the right strain. Yeah, there, you cool. can buy terpene flavors from cannabis and use that in your in your cooking if you want. So you don't get the psychoactive effect, but you do get the terpene flavor from the cannabis, which is mm-hmm. kind of cool. I don't know if any of you guys ever watched Bong Appetit. It's a good show. We all no. do like that. <laughs> I never even heard of that. That's a dope <laughs> name. <laughs> Bong Appetit. What's good about that show is they use a lot of terpenes in their in their mm-hmm. courses and in their, in their dinners and stuff like that, which nice. I have always have not tried yet but always wanted to try using terpenes to add to different foods and, and different uh, recipes. Uh-huh. So take a look at that. If you're into that kind of stuff, you could probably order terpenes online and be able to use those kind of, see if your dispensary has them. Gordon Ramsay yeah. ever try it? I don't know. You should. What about Guy Fieri? Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to switch it over to Paul now, and he's going to talk about what terpenes can do for your body and your health. And uh, so, Paul, you take it over. All right, so you're probably wondering how all this works, and it's because the endocannabinoid system inside of our bodies, uh, when we smoke, these terpenes and cannabinoids kind of attach to the endocannabinoid system and the uh, neurotransmitters, and it ends up affecting you in the in the long run after you smoke. Um, so some of the stuff that's kind of being wondered about right now is because you can obtain these terpenes from other things like fruits and stuff, why don't we really see the effects as much? And that's kind of thought that the THC is kind of like a a carrier and kind of can enhance and different terpenes, like when you have a bunch of them in a strain, they can that can even change the effects of some of them and make them have completely different things. And depending on the level of THC and CBD, it can lower and enhance the effects too. So there's not too much known because we are slowly getting into this legalization stage, which is going to mean that more and more research is coming out as more and more people are opening up to this as a medical option. For that, uh, that's kind of how these terpenes just get into your body. Um, And then what they can do for you, just kind of some examples are... uh, that it can act as a serotonin uptake inhibitor, so kind of like an antidepressant. Nice. Uh, Yeah, which is Mm. huge. Uh, They enhance uh, nepinephrine activity, uh, which is kind of similar to antidepressants again. Mm. Uh, They increase dopamine activity. Dopamine. And, um, yeah, those are just kind of some of the main things that it do, and they can affect your appetite. They can affect – they're kind of good. Some of them can be good with weight loss. And it's, once again, kind of going back to how they don't really know – what makes them like how the effects come out more in your body, like depending on like the level of THC and stuff, as I said, it's same way with these uh, effects of the terpenes. It's still like really new science and there's not the most information out there, but there will be, and you can kind of make your own judgments based on the things you smoke and just kind of compare them to uh, the levels between like different strains and just see how those different THC levels 
affect like a terpene from one strain to the next. Uh, another thing to remember is these terpenes can change from like grower to grower. So say you got this brand new, uh, actually it doesn't even have to be brand new. Say whatever strain you got, say you got blue dream. So if you got blue dream from one dispensary, Mm -hmm. there's like a really good chance that the terpene profile could change like drastically if you get it from a different dispensary. And that goes for, like, Mm -hmm. when new strains are made, too, like, through hybrids and stuff, terpenes are changed completely. Some growers are trying to learn how to carry certain terpene profiles over to new strains because they like the effects that certain one gives, like, give over the others, and they think it'll play better into this strain. So there's a lot of stuff. So you talked about Blue Dream, and I was reading, doing some research on, on what you're talking about here, and it's very heavily micrine. And it's it's synergistic with t- the THC, yeah. which opens up mm. the pathways for what we're going to talk about in the next episode. Yeah. Episode cannabinoids. That's yeah, that's what I'm saying. So they think that the THC can be the thing that makes these terpenes come out so much stronger when you smoke. So it's just really interesting to see what's going to end up happening. Uh, it's something that you definitely need to be following if you're looking at uh, marijuana as a medical option. But yeah, so you should just. Uh, Try to just remember these and take some of this stuff on. Look up the endocannabinoid system a little bit more because some of that science is being questioned, which is going to happen. Uh, but I think it's going to be—I think it's going to be pretty huge once some really in-depth studies come out. And I'm really excited to see what happens. Yeah, so hurry up and fucking legalize this shit so we can get yeah. more fucking studies done for people, you know. But like, like you were talking about that each strain that I'm reading about has these terpenes in it each one has a different example of what it can do for your body like i was reading one on sour diesel and dave was talking about this earlier the limonene it improve the improve the absorption of it with the terpenes it, it's good for your skin mucous membranes and digestive tract that's Ooh. a different strain sour diesel paul talked about blue dream there's another you one heard on of here. Mucinex. yeah there's another one on here called dutch treat that has a lot of tripoline dutch in it. treat huh I know a thing about that. Yeah. Mrs. Weedman's got a little Dutch, and she's probably going to be happy about that Dutch treat later. Visit your local farms and make a pick of uh, of terpenes, which pairs up. It is more fragrant, and it's a healing strain. There's another one. Here, I'll give you another one. Give me another one. Caryophyllene. Okay. I pronounced it pretty decent. All right. Very peppery. It helps with anti-inflammation. So with Paul talking about the different strains for the body here and the terpenes, look into this. If you have ailments, this is good for you and take notes. So Paul, you got anything else, man? Some good stuff. No, that's about it. Like I said, just keep reading and keep learning because slowly we're going to get better and better information and it's exciting. But for now, we're going to just smoke while we wait, I guess. I guess that'll pass some time, right? We'll, uh, Let's get baked. <laughs> Let's get yeah. baked. Holy shit. What do we got today, Polly? We got motherfucking Vanilla Kush. One of the faves. And I say motherfucking, yeah, because it's of the one faves. of the faves. Uh, this is from Nature's Grace. It is a hybrid, um, and it has 22.3% THCA. Uh, so it's... Pretty strong strain, uh, but it is one of my favorites. Uh, everyone's smoking. I'll, I'm gonna take my turn in a second, but it's awesome. Uh, this one gives kind of like I don't even know how to describe it. My favorite thing to do on this strain is to turn on like TV, especially some cartoons. And you just get lost. Like, Anime, yo. We tossed oh, on man. Adventure Time one time, <laughs> and this strain had us zoned in, and we were creating new plots for the story that I'm pretty sure didn't even exist. But it's just an awesome strain. We really like it, so we're going to smoke and I it. And laughed my yeah. ass off, man. <laughs> yeah, this strain is <laughs> we, crazy. We finally got another, uh, another round of it, another eighth of it, and we fucking love this strain. So if you can grab it, it is just everything you like about cannabis. You have that... Nice mm-hmm. mental clarity, but relaxation. You could talk on it, you could think on it, and you can get a lot of just interesting conversation mm-hmm. on this strain. It's really good. Uh, so, but we're gonna go right now into in the papers with Dov. Dov boy, what you got for us, man? This all week. All right. So we got Tom D Giovanni. That already sounds gangster. This guy is awesome. Hey, oh, CFO hey. of Candescent. Uh, basically. 
uh, going into the pop business, what it's like. Uh, it's still similar to the illicit trade. Uh, this dude's riding around with armed guards, hella cash, gats, and dope. Come oh, yeah. on now. This guy's living like Gangster real life, life GTA. This Gangster life. Sick. <laughs> so he's he's a big bill guy too, like Tom D. Giovanni. Like, come on, that guy sounds like he'll probably bust your skull in. <laughs> he didn't need to... It is. He looks like he definitely knows a thing about Gabagool. He probably does, yeah. But uh I wouldn't question him. This guy just rides around in unmarked armor vans with a metal cage, like protecting two million in cash. Per month is what they're transiting, and they're looking at expecting four, that up to four million per month by the end of the year. What state is this? I'm sorry, I missed that. Is it all over the country? Every legal state or he just works. State? He just works everywhere, to my understanding. Damn. Yeah, it's a lot of cashola. Yeah, it's crazy. Is no major banks will like open accounts for uh, the marijuana business yet, and that's that's like the big deal why he's doing that, and he's the CFO. Can you imagine like. You're like the CFO where you work, just like, yeah, I'm gonna just bust in with some armed guards, a bunch of cash, and some dope, just riding around, don't give a fuck. Yeah, if this dude with all that money is having trouble getting into the industry, I wonder how hard it is for the average guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, it's I'm, pretty crazy. GTL, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so, like, the House Financial Services Committee, however, are advancing legislation to authorize banks to serve uh, in the dank biz. But the argument uh, by the lames and the suits are that it's a threat to public health and outweighs the tax benefits. Which is like the biggest argument I see is like people are so scared of teen use rising, Mm -hmm. which just seems so fucking back ass words to me. Like, how is it going to be harder for kids to go somewhere they're going to have to be ID'd? to buy mm-hmm. when they could just hit up like one plug in town and get weed whenever they want like are people that naive that they really think yeah. they can't get their hands on it right now i feel like yeah. it's just such a weak argument but it's still is somehow like riling people up to take like cause around that sorry i'm kind of tangent no, no, it's, it's just it's just kind of crazy to me. Having, They're actually yeah, saying that teen someone. use in cannabis has gone down yeah since the Which, legalization how, of how, how would it well, not like that I mean, yeah. yeah i mean if it you're selling off the streets probably is affecting you. And that's like your business. You don't want to just be selling to teenagers. Right. But anyways, uh, how it affects D. Giovanni, though, and his job is it adds uh, risks and costs to him. And that affects, like, insurance, payment to employees, and, like, filing taxes even. Like, just simple stuff. Like, job security is probably a little, a little rough with that. Like, not knowing what's going to happen with their money. True. Right. Uh, but the cannabis industry is working through a uh, state charter bank or credit unions right now. But those transactions are heavily monitored by the government. So, yeah. you know, Big Brother's got to be there. <laughs> uh, however, growth of Candescent, uh could be affected as well uh, because of this bank issue. Uh, they just invested in their own business so like uh, since they're growing. They put 200 k into a machine that weighs the weed for them. Uh, speed up like packaging and processing nice imagine one of those like i That's thought sick. just like the filler of joints was like cool and like when you watch the oil film I'm like man this thing fucking weighs your weed too yeah there's gonna be like as stuff legalizes i feel like there's gonna be such cool technology coming out yeah and it's just you know we're, <laughs> we're pulling for the candace and dudes Polly uh, decided to awesome take another hit <laughs> he's choking he's choking on that hit everybody so that's what happens when you when you smoke too much in one big rip you know go ahead dob sorry about that ripping them uh but yeah just pulling for candace and tom D- D- Giovanni. hoping uh the best for the employees and uh hopefully these banks get their heads out of their butts they better honestly. soon yep we need to put that money somewhere so but uh good stuff dob thanks for uh just talking about the in the papers with Dob Boy. Yeah, Appreciate I'm it. Get some more papers. Right? Hey, uh, let's. How you guys feeling on that strain? I'm fucking baked. <laughs> I, had to, I had to look back at it because I forgot that it was a hybrid. Look back at it. Because I like feel like ready to go, but I'm also like feeling like just chilling. The so best like, part I think of this hybrids. Is hybrid. I tried to like, guess what it was. Uh, but, yeah. you know. What I like guess. about it is, if any of you burners out there like to mix your strains, because I know there are some strain mixers. 
Vanilla Kush is one of the best to do it with. Yeah. What did you guys do with that one time? Was that a Skywalker OG? You guys, I came, I came downstairs and you guys were fucking baked. It was a good high. This is, it's just such a clean high. Take one hit out of a bong of this, and you just feel good. You feel ready to go. But at the same time, you could also just sit down and chill. It's just like, it's a whatever you want to do strain. Yeah, it's honestly. a good strain. It's I like just it. an all around good strain. So mm-hmm. shout out to Nature's Grace once again. We fucking love this shit, and we will always buy it when we get our hands on it. All right, thanks everybody for listening. We just want to close it out here. We hope you learned something about terpenes. Next, you're going to learn some about cannabinoids, which will also play into how you buy weed. Uh, so things are changing getting away from that sativa indica and you're going to see it. So stay tuned again to learn a little bit more. Uh, we just want to say, check out our Instagram. Uh, it's weedman Four Twenty chronicles. If you got anything you want us to talk about or any questions, email us at weedman Four Twenty chronicles at gmail.com and check out our Twitter also, which is weedman Four Twenty pod. Thanks again for listening Smoke some fucking dank tonight and take it easy. Puff puffing away. Peace.